Hey everybody, it's Greg Fine, the Code Creative, coming back at you with part four of the drag and drop API series. This is a juicy one. It's all about drag and drop file uploads. How can we set up our drag and drop interface in order to upload a file? Why don't we start out by taking a look at a real example from a website called smallseotools.com. Here you can see this box which says drag files to upload. So this box is going to be the drop zone, which we're going to drop our files onto that we want to upload. And what we're going to be able to do with the drag and drop API is drag files from our computer into the browser in order to upload them. So just using this site as an example, I have an image file here on my desktop. This is an image of the English pop girl group from London, which was formed in 1980, called Bananarama. And you might remember them from their 1984 smash hit, Cruel Summer. This could possibly have been the backdrop to your life the first time you fell in love, for example. Well, let's take this image from my desktop and drag it into this box. And the first thing you'll notice is we get some visual feedback. We see the background of the box change to gray, which as a user lets me know that I can drop my file here. And I'll go ahead and release the mouse to drop the file. And here you can see Bananarama in all their glory, sitting there waiting to be uploaded. Let's start out by creating our drop zone element, and we'll do it in kind of a similar way to what we saw on smallseotools.com. We're just going to create one simple element in our HTML, which is going to be the drop zone. We're going to make that a div, and we'll give it a class of drop zone. And we'll also go ahead and give it an ID of drop zone, which we'll use to access it in our JavaScript. Now we'll also give it some text content to let the user know that they can drag a file into this drop zone. So we'll say drag files to upload. So just so you can see it, this is what it is, this div here on line 11. All right, now let's go into our styles.css file. Let's create a rule for this drop zone element. We'll give it a width of 200 pixels, a height of 100 pixels. Let's give it a border, and we'll make that border five pixels. And as we saw in the example website, we're gonna give it a dash border, which is sort of a standard thing that you see when you're doing a file upload. And let's make that border a light gray. That should do it. And because we have some text content inside of this element, let's align it to the center of the box. So we'll do text align center. And if we give it a line height equal to the height of the box, that should center it vertically as well. So let's save. Now let's go into the browser and see what we have to start with. And there's a nice simple file upload box. Oh, snap. Now, for as pretty as this looks, looks aren't everything, right? I mean, beauty is pretty common after all. What we're gonna need is JavaScript in order to create some event handlers, which are gonna handle us dragging in files from our desktop. So let's go back into VS Code and let's set up some JavaScript in our app.js file. So let's bring in app.js. We can close our styles.css file and let's make a little bit more room on the screen. The first thing we'll want to do as usual is get access to this drop zone element and we can do so by creating a const, we can call it drop zone and set that equal to document.querySelector And we'll select it by the ID we gave it, which was drop zone. And now in order to make this element an actual drop zone, we're going to need to use the drop event as well as the drag over event. So on the drop zone, let's call add event listener. And first we'll set up the drag over event. In our callback function as usual, we'll pass in the event. And remember, we're going to have to say prevent default on the event in order to prevent the default behavior of the browser when you drag a file in. And we're going to see exactly what that is in a second. And the other event handler we're going to have to set up is the one for the drop event. So again, we're going to say drop zone dot add event listener. And this one for the drop event. Our callback function, again, we'll pass in the event. And we'll call e or event dot prevent default as we did in the drag over handler. Now, even though we know that we're gonna to have to call prevent default on drag over and drop, I wanna comment these out for a second, just to show you what happens when we don't have prevent default. So I'm gonna go back to the browser, and I'm gonna show you the normal default behavior of the browser when you drag a file into it. 
So I'm going to get bananarama.jpg, drag it in, and you can see what happens when I let go of the mouse. A new tab is opened up with the Bananarama image. Right, my previous tab is here, and when I drag the file in, we opened up this tab. So let's close this tab. Let's go back to VS Code, and let's put back in our prevent defaults, and let's try that one more time. So now if I drag the file, and I drop, right, you can see that that secondary tab has been prevented from opening. And this is the behavior that we want, so we're going to want to use prevent default. Now, as we saw previously, when we drag an element into a drop zone, we get access to a data transfer object on the event. And in our current situation, where we're dragging a file from our desktop into the browser, what we're interested in is the file list object, which exists on that data transfer object. So what we're going to do is we're going to come into our drop event handler, and we're going to simply log out e.datatransfer.files. So this dot .files here, this is going to give us that file list object, which exists on the prototype of the data transfer object. Let's save. Let's go back to the browser now. Let's open up the console. And once again, let's drag that bananarama.jpg file, drag it over the drop zone, release the mouse, and let's take a look at what we get here in the console. We get that file list object that I mentioned. And what you can see here is that we get a numeric value for the property. In the value, we get all the metadata about that file that we just dropped. You can also see that we get a length. And the length here is one because we only dropped one file. As we're going to see in a moment, you can drop multiple files, in which case that length will be greater than one. But if we go ahead and we take a look at this first file object, we can see now that we get all this data associated with that particular file. Right, we have last modified, last modified date, here's the name of the file, the size, the type of the file, image slash JPEG, and we're going to look in particular a little bit further at this type property in a moment to see how that might be useful for us. As I mentioned, we can drag more than one file into the drop zone. So if you look here on my desktop, you can see I also have this Bananarama 2 file, and this one is a PNG. And to start out with, I'm just going to refresh the page, and I'm going to drag both of these files into the drop zone, and we'll take a look at that file list object then in the console to see what we get. So we'll grab both files, we'll drag them in, drop them over the drop zone, and now you can see we have length of 2, and that first file is going to be associated with this 0 property, the second file will be associated with this one property. And if we take a look at them, we can see their associated data. The first file is an image slash JPEG. The second file is of type image slash PNG. So one thing I think we can do with the type property, something that would be useful, is let's say that we wanted to only allow certain types of files to be uploaded. Well, why don't we write a conditional statement in our drop event handler to only allow files of type image slash JPEG to be dropped in the drop zone. So I'm going to go back to VS Code, and let's get rid of this console log. And what we can do now, since we're dragging in multiple files, is we can loop over that file list object. We can say for let file of e.datatransfer.files. And then in here, let's write our conditional statement. Let's say if file.type equals that type of image slash JPEG. Well, only then let's log out the file. And let's save and go back to the browser now. Let's refresh the page. And once again, let's try dragging those two files into the drop zone. And now you can see that we've only logged out the JPEG image to the console, right? Because that's the only type of file that we're allowing. Another possibility would be to add a class, like an invalid class, to provide some kind of visual feedback if the file type is not allowed. So for example, we could change this drop zone's background to the color red if somebody tries to drop a PNG file into the drop zone. Now of course, ultimately what we'd want to do, instead of just simply console.logging the file, we'd probably want to call function something like upload and pass in that file. And then in that upload function, we would use something like the fetch API to make a post request to the backend, passing in a particular file or set of files. 
making this request to the back end could be the topic of an entire video. So if you'd like to see a video about that, let me know down in the comments and I'll see what I can do. Thanks for watching.